He was frequently called a born military genius. His maxim, get there first with the most men, is one of the war's most frequently quoted statements. Nathan Bedford Forrest was one of the most controversial figures during the Civil War era, the only soldier on either side to go from private to lieutenant general during the course of the war, self-made millionaire, best cavalryman, and many other titles, conceal this man's violent nature, which we will learn about in today's video. Forrest was born into a poor family and grew up in rural Tennessee and Mississippi. His hard-scrabble childhood developed his aggressive as well as violent personality. According to Forrest's biographer, Brian Steele Wills, violence and honor remained an integral component of daily life. Men fought in the streets over genuine and imagined problems, generally settling their differences with blood. After his father died in 1837, Forrest took over as the primary breadwinner for the family at the age of 16. In 1841, Forrest started a business with his uncle Jonathan Forrest in Hernando, Mississippi. In 1845, his uncle was murdered in a street fight over a business argument and Forrest responded by murdering two of the killers with a pistol and a bowie knife. That year, Forrest married Mary Ann Montgomery, a member of a well-known Tennessee family. He moved to Memphis in 1851 and eventually became a millionaire, making a fortune by trading livestock, brokering real estate, growing cotton, and most importantly, selling slaves. Memphis was then effectively located between the Upper South slaves, who were sold down the river from their old Kentucky home to the horrible cotton and sugar farms in the Delta, and Forrest grew socially and financially. In 1859, media reports of Forrest's business focused on a specific product, an enslaved girl named Anna Marie Bailey, who was Frederick Douglass's niece. Some biographers of Forrest tried to portray him as a benevolent slave trader who cared for his slaves and avoided splitting families. However, a Civil War newspaper source described whippings in which four slaves held the prisoner stretched out in the air while Forrest personally used the bullwhip. Women were allegedly stripped naked and whipped with a saltwater-soaked leather thong. Former slaves later confirmed such stories, describing terrible brutality and separation of families. By the time the American Civil War began in 1861, he had become one of the wealthiest men in the southern United States, with a personal fortune that he claimed was worth $1.5 million. Despite his lack of formal education, Forrest was able to read and write clear and grammatical English. After the Civil War started, Forrest volunteered as a private in the Tennessee Mounted Rifles and used his own money to help equip the unit. He quickly rose in rank to Lieutenant Colonel and was placed in charge of his own battalion of 650 mounted troopers. His notorious temper, which resulted in an instant and uncontrollable rage that he later regretted, drove him to abuse the troops under his control. Even Forrest's more sympathetic biographers describe incidents in which Forrest smashed a scout's head against a tree for providing false information, slapped a lieutenant into a river for refusing to roll up his sleeves and join his men in building a bridge, knocked another out of a boat with an oar for refusing to help paddle across the Tennessee River, and shot a color bearer for fleeing a route. Nonetheless, Forrest won his first combat later in 1861, when he launched a surprise attack on a regiment of 500 Union forces in Sacramento, Kentucky. On June 14, 1863, Lieutenant Andrew Gould demonstrated Forrest's inharmonious relationships with his subordinates. Forrest, dissatisfied with Gould's performance during the Battle of Day's Gap, removed him from command. The argument turned heated and although the sequence of events is unclear, Forrest emerged with a round from Gould's revolver in his belly, while Gould received a stab wound to the lung. Gould lingered for nearly two weeks before passing away on June 26, 1863, in his bed at the Nelson House. He was 23. Forrest healed and was quickly back in the saddle. Forrest supporters said he was attacked, verbally or physically, in an attempt to explain his behavior. 
In February 1862, Forrest was involved in an intense battle at Fort Donelson, Tennessee. Despite being trapped by Union forces led by General Ulysses S. Grant, Forrest, along with General Simon Bolivar Buckner and the fort's other 12,000 Confederates, refused to surrender. Shortly before Grant took over the fort, Forrest led approximately 700 cavalry through the Union siege lines and fled to Nashville. Forrest was strongly involved in the Battle of Shiloh in April 1862 and led rear guard during the Confederate retreat into Mississippi. Forrest, who was already known for his bravery, reportedly led a cavalry charge against Union skirmishers and fought numerous troops on his own, despite suffering a bullet wound to the back. He reportedly killed over 30 men by himself. His favorite tactic was the charge, and he repeatedly defeated Union forces that outnumbered him as he personally led his troops. During the fight, Forrest received four serious wounds and had 29 horses shot out from beneath him. Throughout late 1862 and early 1863, Forrest's cavalry constantly harassed Grant's army, cutting off communication routes and raiding supply stores as far north as Kentucky. Forrest avoided engaging the greater Union numbers in straight combat, instead relying on guerrilla tactics to deceive and exhaust his pursuers. Union General William Sherman, no amateur himself, referred to him as a devil who should be hunted down and killed, even if it cost 10,000 lives and bankrupts the treasury. He shot his own soldiers if they attempted to flee a battle. He was faced with duels and fierce arguments, oversaw cruel whippings of obstinate slaves, constantly twisted the truth in his own favor, and once wrongfully shot innocent deserters. The most devastating episode, however, was the massacre of Union men at Fort Pillow, Tennessee. After encircling the fort, Forrest demanded surrender from the 580 men within, saying, I cannot be responsible for the fate of your command. While this demand was being negotiated under the white flag, Forrest illegally improved his position and his troops began pouring over the walls. Confederate Sergeant later wrote to his family, The slaughter was awful. I, with several others, tried to stop the butchery, and at one time partially succeeded. But General Forrest ordered them shot down like dogs, and the carnage continued. There were other similar claims from Confederate soldiers, including those who said that Forrest had ordered them to kill the last goddamn one of them. Forrest's supporters eventually found a Union officer who claimed there had been no massacre of men preparing to surrender an officer who later admitted to giving a false statement under pressure while in rebel captivity. Forrest himself wrote joyfully in dispatches. The river was dyed with the blood of the slaughtered for 200 yards. Approximately 500 officers were killed, with only a few escaping. My loss was approximately 20 murdered. It is hoped that these facts will show the northern people that Negro soldiers cannot deal with southerners. Later, as the war almost ended, Forrest discovered a man and a boy without documents near Selma, Alabama, where he was about to command a last-ditch defense. Despite their claims of innocence, the two were executed on the spot with the words, shot for desertion, written above their bodies. Forrest ordered that the bodies be left out for two days before burial. It was eventually discovered that they had been completely innocent. There is no debate about Forrest's military genius. He showed it in battles such as Chickamauga, Bryce's Crossroads, and Okolona, but he ruined his reputation by committing one of the bloodiest massacres of the Civil War. After the war, he returned to Memphis. Forrest rapidly connected with hardline anti-reconstruction resistance, and he secretly became the first Ku Klux Klan leader or Grand Wizard. Although he denied involvement multiple times, including lying to Congress, Forrest led the Klan during one of its most violent and effective periods when robed terrorists successfully rolled back Reconstruction. He even informed a newspaper reporter that he intended to kill extreme Republicans even though he was not a member. He also said he could raise 40,000 men in four days. Forrest supporters have always said that he abolished the Klan when it grew violent. 
In fact, it had been extremely brutal for years under Forrest and was only abolished when its task was largely complete. Blacks and Republicans were harassed into not voting and it received widespread criticism. Forrest's financial situation worsened after his railroad firm failed in 1874. He was forced to sell many of his belongings and spent his last years running a prison labor camp near Memphis. Toward the end of his life, he abandoned or gave the appearance of abandoning his radical views. Just a few months before his death, Forrest went to an African-American barbecue in Memphis. To make apologies for his previous wrongs, Forrest pushed African-Americans to work, be industrious, live honestly, and act truly, and declared that, when you are oppressed, I'll come to your relief. Thanks for watching. Subscribe and press likes.